was so good morning i literally just finished teaching so i'm sweating but i wanted to make a follow-up video on using zoom for teaching group fitness classes because i've had a lot of requests for more information kind of like a more in-depth how i do it and that's what we're gonna do today so i'm gonna have a few like bonus tips at the end that have nothing to do with zoom so definitely stick around for those because they have absolutely helped me in the now going on like seven or eight weeks of teaching group fitness from my living room so you don't want to miss out on those but let's hop right into zoom i'm definitely gonna look like a floating head Great, all right guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually put in my headphones. I just like to make sure that they're connected. So the first thing I'm gonna do after I put that in is I'm gonna open up Zoom. So I'm gonna sign in. And now I'm actually gonna go over here and I'm gonna check for updates. So you'll notice that I have an update available. I have had some issues with Zoom crashing throughout my classes. I think that some of it does have to do with Zoom continuously putting out these updates because all of a sudden like millions of people are using this program that was not designed to be this. So I just always recommend like checking for an update before you start teaching. All right, what's the success? All right, so we're gonna just start like a new meeting right now. Great, so once you're on here, um, it's going to give you some audio options. I'm going to join with computer audio. Great, I'm using computer audio. So now I just like to make it full screen like right away. So I'm just gonna click on participants. I'm gonna click on chat. And you're gonna, you're gonna see two different options down here. So this is your mute option and this is your stop video. So if you go up to the side, I just wanna make sure that I am connected um, to my microphone here, and then um, also make sure that this is my speaker. So power beats, power beats. I also just like to run a quick test. So yes, I hear a ringtone, uh, low, great. I heard a replay. And then finish. All right, so this is where I would then like start to set up my angles. We'll talk about this more like once we get into like the other tips that I'm gonna be giving you guys because this is just gonna be Zoom. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to share my screen. I'm gonna go up to advanced settings and click music or computer sound only. Now I'm gonna share that and you're gonna see this like confirmation up here. This is very important if you're playing music because I talked about this a little bit more in depth in my other video, so I've been seeing it. Check it out. Um, so from here, this is now like everything's set up, it's ready to go. If it's a class where I don't have a waiting room, I typically do just like to like mute and like stop my video, and just have my beautiful face up there. Besides that, I just keep it like until a few people are in class and then I'll come on and start telling them what they need. So as people are trickling in, let's do this. As people are trickling in, I will have music playing. So you wanna make sure that your computer volume is all the way up. And then you wanna make sure that your Spotify volume, when people are trickling in, um, I like to take it down, I mean, I wish this had numbers. I think this is around like 30%, maybe 25%. Then once class starts, I will typically bring the volume up to about like 40 to 50. And I always just ask them too, like I, I press play, and I'm like, everyone give me a little thumbs up. How's that volume? Could it be louder, softer? Like, can you hear me okay? Be ready to like play with the volume throughout class, especially if your class does rely on the music. Like whether you're teaching a bar class that goes to the music, whether you're teaching dance cardio, just be really pre prepared and ready to like futz with it, bring it up and down because um, not everything's recorded on the same audio level. So we're gonna like go back. We're gonna end this meeting and I'm gonna show you how to schedule a meeting. So coming in here, we're gonna hit schedule. Um. YouTube test meeting. Um, we're gonna make it for right now. This is where you can like change the day, change the time. This is up to you. Like you can require a meeting password or not. I just always keep it on there. This is for when people log in. So when you log in, do you want your video to go right on or do you wanna keep it off? Participants, do you want it to turn the video on right away or keep it off? That's like completely up to you. This is gonna be like when you schedule this, like where do you want it to go? Like what type of calendar? 
um, and I like Google. So advanced options, this is important. So this is the waiting room. So we'll actually, I'll try and when I'm teaching later to get like a little clip of what the waiting room looks like. I don't do a waiting room in my classes. I just let them come right in so they can like jam the music. I also like keep in mind, if you are the only person in your class and someone joins late and you're all the way over here, you might not be able to see that people are waiting to get in the room because you have to manually be adding them into the room. And then I like to mute participants on entry because if not, like if someone joins late, for instance, they're gonna be unmuted and it's so freaking annoying. So that's another thing like keep everyone muted when you're teaching otherwise it's really distracting so now I'm gonna schedule so now it's gonna open up my Google Calendar and now it's gonna come in here I'm just gonna save it now what we're gonna do you can literally just send this link and this information to people I send the link and then I just like right underneath if you're having trouble joining from the link like use this manually because people can actually sign in manually you just click this Join the meeting. And that's what it looks like. I'm gonna start my video. We back. All right, that's done. So let me show you really quickly. I don't know if this is like helpful. I know this is like silly, but it looks so much better. When you sign up for one of my classes, you get like a confirmation email from Wix. I could totally just like include the link then and there. But number one, I get nervous that people are gonna lose it. And then like people are like emailing me like right before class, like, what's the link? I can't find it in my email. And I don't wanna deal with that. But then number two, like it just looks really bad. So I like to send out like another thing. This, I'm fully aware this is not what MailChimp is for, but I just can't get it to look like like nice going right through Gmail. I don't know. Anyway, this is like above and beyond. Um, Let's go, let's just go to this one right here. Great. So this is the email that people get 30 minutes before class and I let them know in their confirmation email. There's like a, a little logo up here and this, and then I made this little graphic to click here. So when you click here, it goes to the Zoom meeting. This is where it's really important. If you're having any issues with this link, you can manually join a meeting here. So that would be from join, and then you would enter in the meeting ID. And then if they're prompted for a password, that's where it's gonna come in. I think that's it.